As the jostle for 2023 presidency continues, former governor of Imo State Senator Rochas Okorocha joins live to speak on his aspiration. And with the third force, will it be participating in the upcoming elections? And do they stand the chance come 2023? Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anoko. Recently, Rochas Okorocha formally declared his interest in the run for office of the president. Senator Okorocha said the country is facing a number of challenges that need to be addressed. The former Imo State governor said he's seeking to establish a new Nigeria where issues of poverty and security will be addressed. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, filed charges against him hours after the declaration. Uh, alleging that Okorocha conspired with others to steal 2.9 billion public funds. The a federal high court in River State ordered the EFCC to desist from harassing Senator Okorocha pending the determination of the case. Now, speaking on activities of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, in his state during his time as governor, Okorocha said he saw the IPOB members as poorly educated children and not terrorists. Well, we're being joined live by the former governor of Imo State, Senator Rochas Okoracha. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us. Thank you. Great. Thank um, you very much. It's interesting. A lot of Nigerians wondered why a few hours later after you declared your intention to run for presidency, the EFCC comes after you. Um, I'm, I'm sure that um, a lot of people question that, but... Why do you want to be president, knowing the daunting task that it is? I mean, Nigeria has so many problems. It's bedeviled by insecurity, poor education, lack of infrastructure. Why would anybody want that job? Well, I, I'd like to start by saying God bless Nigeria. God bless my country, Nigeria, a great country. The best gift of God to my country, a great nation prosperous nation, different people. That's always been my prayer. So I'm in this whole business of politics because of the love for my country. I genuinely love this country. And I want the best for this country. And I'm willing to make any form of sacrifice to build this great new Nigeria. Knowing that our nation is going through a whole lot um, in terms of what is called challenges, which are primarily man-made challenges that we're all going through. I, 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 I have decided to run the, for this great office as President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to, to change the narrative and, and to sing a new song for this nation. So, uh, the world over, you know that we are not a third nation, and we are not a third nation. And that uh, if, if anything were the best. Interesting. Uh, what makes you think that you're the man for the job? Because, I mean, several people have thrown in their hats into the ring, declaring their, you know, uh, their ambitions also. But what's that thing that makes you so certain that you are the man to steer the ship, especially now that Nigerians are yearning for good leadership? I can see you're taking so many questions at the same time. Yes. And I hope I, I do follow it well. You had asked earlier, what, uh, why do I want to be president? And I told you, it's born out of my genuine concern for this nation, my love for this country, and I genuinely love this country, and I wish this country well. And I'm not happy about this, some of the bad stories about our country. And I want to sing a new song, I want to take the narrative. This has been my, my uh, what I really want to do. And I don't like the fact that our nation is being insulted by countries and other nations. Our passport has no value. People treat us like anything because we need to restore the dignity of the people. That's what we do. Now, asking to me, why do I think that uh, uh, I'm a person for the job at this moment? Um, I have, I've tried this in the past. This will be the fourth time I'm running for this office as a president. I 
federal republic of Nigeria. And if you recall, one was uh, in 2011, 20 years ago, the other one was um, with President Mamadou and Blessed Memory, who I came second. And the third one was in Lagos, in APC. Or you can see, if I continue searching for some news, I'm not satisfied. Uh, I want to see a great new Nigeria come into place. Hmm. Born out of vision, born out of passion to make this nation grow. That's the question I have, have, have answered. And I want to inform you that I'm not in this job for what I can get. I'm in this job for what I can give. So for me, is a spirit of sacrifice and high level of patriotism, which is born out of the love for my country and not necessarily the fear of the Lord, or the sentiments of God. Now, what plans do I have? First of all, for you to say what plans you have. You have to identify or describe the Nigeria of today. First, uh, the nation we call Nigeria today is facing so many challenges. And what some of the major challenges can be classified into three categories. And the three categories, one is the unity of this country. Now, the unity of this country uh, needs to be strengthened, especially for a call of separation, cessation, uh, attendant insecurity. Now, that is a very key point. And I found myself a proper and rightful too, that as a president of Nigeria, I can unify this country and Nigerians will trust me, respect of their religion, tribe, color, whatever, that Nigerians will believe in me, that I end their trust. How do I end their trust? I'm not saying I will make enlightenment, but I will say I have strengthened the interest of the country in the past. I'm an Igbo man, born of Igbo parenting, educated in the North, grew up in the North, but had my financial apartment from the Southwest. So you can see, for me, Nigeria is a constraint. And that saw me, I was made a lot of establishment because I believe in this country. Hmm. Uh, I've made establishment in the southwest, uh, in, in Ibadan. I've made establishment in Sokoto, Zadia, Jones, uh, Kano, Bauchi, Adamawa, Imo, Enugu, of which I cross it, where I'm, I'm training more than 25,000 indigenous children. If I don't love this country, I will not. So, I'm sure of Believe me, uh, my track record speaks for me. And everyone will believe that what has the truly united country and the The last component of the thing is this nation now requires somebody who can make sacrifice, giving, giving all that you have. Senator, are you still there? To benefit mankind and benefit your people. I'm talking about compassion. I'm there. Okay. Oh, you're not hearing me at all. I can hear you now. Me? Yes. You lost me where? Where, 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 where? where do you get off? Where do I get off? So I know how to start. Yeah, you talked about okay. training children in Cross River. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So I said to you that if I said this nation requires now, I don't mean tomorrow, especially where institutions are not working. This question requires some kind of, somebody with compassion at heart, somebody who really cares. I mean, caring not from the bottom of your heart. And I think I care. I care, especially as the effect of that toward the less the use of this country. And, and that this is very important. But let me tell you the most important thing that I think I uh, I, I, I can address the issue of the economy. Because that's a five vote upon which everything this country protects. That is the, what you call the insecurity, that's what is called the poverty, this is what is called everything around the economy. Once the economy is right, everything will be right. When people say they will address the issue of insecurity and they will address the issue of poverty, the question is how? How is the question? And that's what nobody in this country has answered that question. And by the way, if somebody can give me a better answer, I don't have my time. If it's somebody better than me, I'll, I'll give one. Because for me, it's about sacrifice. But let me tell you about how. Yeah. Let me even tell the country that you find the country of the nation today. We need to summarize it that for every one billion naira problem this nation has to do, they have only 10,000 naira they can or they have to borrow. What's about it? The question is how can you create one? We need somebody who can create one. Somebody who can now bring plenty, put plenty of the 
bring plenty of resources, money, to take care of Nigeria's problem because our expenditure far outweighs our income. And that's a problem that we have. And this will take the business minded person. Business minded person. Unfortunately, uh, 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 most people aspiring for this position, excuse me, I do not have business idea on how to turn it around the economy of, of, of Nigeria. That's the problem we have. And how do you know somebody who can? But, but is business the acumen the only thing that you need? Because, I mean, again, I started by talking about the many problems of Nigeria. And, I, and I, I almost stopped at asking what you think the biggest problem is, but now you're saying it, that it's dealing with the economy. But how do you deal with an economy when the atmosphere in itself is not safe for businesses to even come in and thrive, including the local businesses that should be the one running the economy? So you can't talk about the economy in isolation of insecurity, can you? No, you, 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 are, you are wrong. The, the, the let a bit. Who wants to do business in a business uh, in an environment that is not safe? Just, just for those are you see poverty and insecurity is like husband and wife. And whenever you have high level of poverty, you must have high level of insecurity. So you see, when you are let me put it this way, if what you are talking about, you want to solve the problem of the symptoms, not the disease. That's the problem we have with most politicians who are saying what they are saying now. You see, you have to deal with the disease for the symptoms to disappear. The symptoms is what a, symptoms is insecurity. Insecurity isn't is a symptom of the disease of what is a, and that brings me the ability to create work. I don't have a vision, vision now. And if you ask me how can I create work, I did that in almost 10. Let me give you a smallest example that you might understand. I wish the video can be there so I can look at the facts. Now, listen. Now, now look at what I did in Emo for instance. When I came to Emo State. Uh, I realized that I had a big problem, big economic problem, and insecurity was another day of the day. There was a lot of children up there. There was so much of uh, children not going to school, out of school children. Now, I came up with a vision. This first time to create world. That's me, did I depend on the subvention coming from uh, federal government, which makes everybody cashier, or my internal generated revenue? How do I create the world? Now, first, I identified land. This land that you're standing on, as, an, as a capital, and are treated as a wealth set aside for production of further wealth. And that what people do not know that land is, is a huge, huge, huge capital. And that's what I did in the state. What do I do? By certification of land alone, I raised billions and billions of naira to do the infrastructure, to do free education, build the first cargo airport, build the new uh, Central Hospital, 546 schools. Uh, the best high court. I did a lot with free education. Now, when I came to Industry, the plot of land in Industry was 350,000, 500,000. You can ask questions. When I, when I finished with him, I left Industry, the plot, same plot of land came back to 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million. What is dangerous? That's what I mean by thinking outside the box. We have so much wealth in this country, but the vision to change it into money or create jobs or create wealth, create the middle class, is what is lacking. Even if you import the whole arms today uh, from all over the world to fight in security in Nigeria, it will not end. You can only kill one million, another one million will come. It's a problem. So poverty is not your, it, what do you call it? Security is not your problem. Address poverty and security will die. Great job for the use of security will die. My dear, this is your problem of your country. And so in your fighting poverty, you're talking about wealth creation, and all you've mentioned is land, and this is what you did I in Emo State. One. I just gave you one. One. But you're, you're running, that's Emo State. Maybe land can be a wealth creation technique, but this is Nigeria, a country bigger than Emo State. How do you intend to do this? Don't forget that all of the states in this country have different needs, and different strategies need to be undertaken to deal with those problems. For example, no. For example, a state like Cross River, my state, that has, we called it a civil service state. At some point when we have had Donald Duke, it was tourism uh, that was the mainstay. But now it has nothing. How do you intend to deal with that issue? Now, well, this is again very wrong. You see, don't even say a state is a civil service state. That's a, a bad name to give to a state. 
It's not right. It's just like well, it does not so have well, any yeah. income earning um, abilities no, other no, than no, tourism no, no. at no. the time. Right now, we no. have industries that are moribund and are unable to generate income. Salaries have not been paid for months. What do you call that state, sir? I, I, I don't know about that, but I, I, I do know that the governor is doing his best. I don't know about that. I don't think that governments have this discussion. Talk about national issue. President of Federal Republic of Nigeria that I want to lead. Exactly. Now, the problem is that every state in this country is viable. Uh, 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 Costa can be good for agriculture. It can be good for tourism. It can be good for human capital development. It can be good for many things. Now, 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 I just uh, 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 take for instance, let me come again to give you the, my line of thought. If you come back to uh, Nigeria as a country, from Sokoto to Kwara, uh, uh, at the distance of almost how many kilometers, is all gold, for instance. We have so much human resources material resources enough enough to make Dubai out of this country, to make America Germany out of this country. Mm. What we have not been able to do is that we have not been able to 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 to, to manage the resources, our our God given resources and our nation properly. So Nigeria is not a poor nation. Nigeria is a wealthy nation with poor citizens mm. arising from ignorance. And arising from management vision, I'm just giving you that. Okay. So uh, 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 last time I asked some somebody here in Federal Capital Territory, why can't FCT here be, be like Dubai? What's the difference? What do they have in Dubai we don't have? Here? Well, probably it takes a businessman in Dubai to say, listen, OPA, other people's money. Do you know Nigerian money is in Dubai? They brought it to Dubai. America is in Dubai. Who told the money came from Dubai? Now, if you don't know how to master this opium, other people's money to develop the source of your land, you cannot do it. Okay. Another big problem we have, my dear, is the issue of the education. The education is faulty. The education system is tailored towards the, you know, uh, education system for where institutions work. What you need now is tailor your education to such uh, uh, technologically best education that can, that can, if like, transform the comatose resources of your land to create wealth. Very easy. This I'm saying is not. But, 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 but Senator, the average Nigerian, and, and I mean the average Nigerian, has a bachelor's or has a higher diploma. We're very educated people in this part of the country. We have, a, I mean, the middle class at least. We have a lot of people who have paper qualifications that do not have jobs. Wrong that do not have. No, 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 no. I said, I did not say all of the people in the middle class. I said many. In other words, there could be a few that are not as educated. But what I'm emphasizing is that, yes, our education may, may not be great, but we leave the shores of this country and we become better. We do bigger things. We're more successful. So I don't know if we can really say that changing education uh, or the face of education will solve our problem. But quickly, I want to go back to the economy. You talked about something in your um, presentation when you declared. You talked about the fact that our budget is also a problem. And you said something about having... Um, you, you, I, I'd like to quote it directly. You talked about um, a budgeting tax force budget. And I, I asked myself what you meant by a tax force budget. Maybe you can explain to us as Nigerians what that is and how it would help the economy of the country. Yes, you see, my dear, if you jump this out of here, I will not be able to communicate. My problem is by just listening to me and getting what is in this there. What I just said to you, I find our education is still not wrong. We need education now. What we need is to have a degree in, 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 in electrical installation, a degree in plaster, ordinary plaster, a degree in, in pilot, a degree in, in building, a degree in agriculture, a degree in uh, animal farm, a degree in uh, whatever it is, you know, specific for specific job. We want to change the entire thing. But to Nigerians, English language is education. English language is just a language. It's not education. Then, let me get back to that. So I did that in Yemen when I introduced Uh, Senator, we can't hear you anymore. It's what is called the Imo State College of Advanced Degree. You can still go for a woman club. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I said I did that in Imo, where if you have the first degree or first degree, 
you still have to go for a three months course in the most state college of advanced professional studies to get a professional certificate that you can be your own boss, not waiting for a white collar job. This is the new Nigeria we're talking about. But coming back to what is called the tax force budgetary system, God bless you. I didn't know that you listened to that. Now, what you see, the bureaucratic bottlenecks we have in dispensing the budget of, of Nigeria is 40. And that is what is called the corruption lie. Hmm. So if you have a, a project here, say it's budgeted one billion to, to be constructed in Oboko, my village, in Imo State, before that one billion of travels across the Makodi, it has gone back to 500 million. Before it gets to uh, Enugu, it has gone to 250 million. Before it gets to Imo, it has gone to 100 million. Before it gets to my Boko, my village, it's suffering from HIV or shock and is dead. That's what will happen. So we're saying stretch point, means like a tax force, is a guided budget that which must produce that for which it is meant for. And that will help a whole lot because our culture, uh, you must bring our culture to bear, our lifestyle to bear in governance. We were just borrowing everything from America, from Britain, from Germany, not knowing that their culture is quite different. In Nigeria, we say my own is my own and our own is our own. So that philosophy, uh, that belief must bring to bear in governance to bring more results. Uh, for instance, what what does the Minister of Transport, why does he have to, I mean, Minister of Works, what business does he have going to become my village to go and do it? In, in, in that spirit. These are what is called, and by so doing, he will take about 20 million naira extra codes from security plan and travel as inspected project. This, you know, we must cut our code according to material available, okay. not according to our size. That's the economic theory of what I'm talking about. I will be for example. So the task force is something specific. You get it, you finish with it. Here is your cash, go and deliver. Deliver on what you've taken. We will get results. But this bureaucratic bottleneck is terrible. Before they finish the design, half of the month is gone. Before you get to November, they have not awarded the contract. They award the contract by December 1st. And then before you know it, variation has come. In. That's why no project is finished in Nigeria. It will not be finished. Okay. When I was the governor of the state, I applied the tax force system, which is the problem to the uh, this is the problem that most people have been battling with in my state, but it gave me results. Okay. And I did what I did because of that system. Let me quickly, because we're almost running out of time, let me push you now on um, trust. Because it's one thing to say, I want to be president. It's another thing to gain the trust of the people to actually say, well, we want you to be president. I listened again to your speech. Uh, I listened to it over and over again. Um, you seem to, you know, have the gift of the gap and you seem to have convinced the people in the room and maybe other people. But Nigerians seem to also be at a point uh, where they've been talked out. They've heard so much. Um, the, the Buhari administration made a lot of promises and here we are. Uh, we're not really enjoying all of those promises that we hoped for. And I, 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 permit me to say that you also were part of the people who brought this government into power. But here you are saying you want to build a better Nigeria. But did you not foresee that when you pushed for the Buhari administration? And why should Nigerians trust no. you to do what you promised? No, no. no again, and, and let me take you. You see, uh, what we have in this country is a campaign of deceit. People say what you cannot, you cannot do. You can't give what you don't have. My dear, you can't give what you want. In the first place, let me say this to you, that as the campaign comes up now, all you're going to be able to hear different slogan, I will build road, I will do this, I will, I will, I will. Now, how will Nigeria trust me? And how will they trust them? It takes track record, what you've never given in the past. Now, if I tell Nigeria that I will make education free, which I've declared that education will be free from Brahma to University, Nigeria should believe me because as a businessman, and through the Richards Foundation, I've been able to train 25,000 children every year, 3,000 joining every year. And I've done that as a businessman, that's vision man. I did that as a government in Limbo State, where education became free in Limbo State from Brahma to University. If I say I'll do it as President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, believe me, I will do it. But if somebody who has never trained one child 
tells you to make education free, don't believe it, it's deceiving you. They just can end my choice. If I say to Nigerians, I believe in the unity of this country, I'm not a liberal man, but you see me in Sokoto, you see me in Kano, you see me in Tanzania, you see me in Bauchi, Adamawa, Jos, Oyo, I mean, uh, Oyo, in Southwest, in Cross River recently, which I just started. If I could do this in the past, out of love for humanity and for Nigerians, believe me, I'll preach the gospel of unity. Now, if I tell you I can make one naira to become two naira, I was a child of pork heritage, working on the six trading on oranges and coconut. If I can go through those lines and become what I am today, then you should also believe me that I can create what. So let nobody deceive you on what you don't, they cannot provide. And then use opportunity to condemn what is going on now in the country, which I hate, I, 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 and the kind of campaign of calumny going on now. But I, I want to appeal to Nigerians that this time around, Nigerians must be seen to receive lives. And let us talk about issues, not sentiments, which has finished this country. Take, for instance, this campaign of calumny about people like Canada videos about uh, uh, that statement, Timibu. it is wrong, it's condemnable. Nobody should campaign against anybody's health, whether true or not. But campaign of issue, you can even say to Timibu, listen, we have not done this, we have not done this, we don't believe we can do it. They use his health status or what, everything. It's not, it's not only not good, it's a okay. like I want to have to do that part of it. Okay. But let us be clear on campaigns of issues, you that I'm talking to my dear uh, young lady. I want this your new program to start whatever first. Try and get people to explain to you how, which is what I've been lacking. And I'm able to explain you just a bit of how, small how. And if you ask me how you're able to make education free for 25 years, I'll tell you how. I'm not the richest man in this country. But if you're willing to make sacrifice, you can do that. If you are punished solid heart, you can do that. So like, just can trust me. Okay. Like, just can Quickly, before I let you go, um, we, you also are aware of the um, canvassing for the uh, Southwest pres uh, Southeast president. Um, we, we have seen Southern governors, we've seen um, leaders of thought push that political parties zone their presidential tickets uh, to, the south, uh, to the South generally. But then, of course, uh, Ndigbo have also been pushing that there be uh, an Igbo president. You're not the first person who has, um, who's from that that's extraction that has decided that they want to be president. But with all that you've said today and what you said on the day you declared that you were going to run for this office, um, how much um, energy and um, vigor and power do you think that Ndigbo will throw behind you? What's the weight of Ndigbo? Uh, in supporting you, do you see them throwing their weight behind you as you uh, move ahead for uh, this presidency, um, you know, journey? First, let me define an evil man for you. Maybe evil man is the most misunderstood human being in this country. An evil man is a wonderful man, a bridge builder, who leaves his hometown, his home state, travel to another person's state, and contribute to the political, economic development of that state, sometimes without remembering that it has to do that in his own state or Igbo land. But it is only Igbos that do that. That's why I call them the true Nigerian. They are the true Nigerian. Just like you cannot see uh, any of these aspirants now who will tell you no aspirant in Nigeria contesting for this election that is not from Igbo land that has put one single stop or shop or one block in Igbo land. That makes you know that Igbos will really be the people for this nation when it comes to the presidency of Nigeria. But talking about me and the Igbo, I understand my people. They are not good beginners. They are good finishers. Just wait until I pick this ticket. Igbos will watch for Abuja here. I want to push everybody away and start, and start, and start the movement. And that is who they are. They're not good beginners. They're good are you certain that you stand a chance, you know, against all of the people in within your party who have already put their foot forward for this Definitely. office? Listen, listen, my dear. Do you stand a chance? Not even stand a chance. Uh, I, I, I stand one of the best chances if APC wants to have victory in this election. No chance should do that. And I tell you what, because if you put the wrong candidate, people will take. And what would they take, take that from me? 
because of my massive followers from the left, followership. And anybody can say that. Because I can easily be accepted across the length and breadth of this country. So, but if you give to John Bagus, what will you even start? So, I, 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 I know I stand a very good chance, and not because of that. It's the vision in me that is driving me, that, I, that makes me, convinces me that this is the right time for Nigeria okay. to go and go forward. Okay. Well, and if you do not pick this ticket, would you throw your weight behind no, another no, person? I, I, will, I will pick it. I will pick it. Okay. Well, then let's stay positive. Senator Ross of Korja, we want to thank you for being part of the conversation. We appreciate you taking the time out. Thank you. But next time, let's get more better equipment so the internet will not be a problem. All right. But I support great. you and I will support this year. Congratulations. All right. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. Now, when we return, we discuss the third force. Yes, the third force is saying that they're coming out with a party just before the elections. Stay with us.